The surgeon writes you an email. You missed this meniscus tear in your report. In such a young patient, this matters. You open the MRI to check and the tear looks obvious. Your coffee suddenly tastes sour and you think, why am I such an idiot? This surgeon will never trust me again. How, how could this happen? If you've had a day like this, this video is for you. My name is Dr. Christoph Acton and I am an MSK radiologist. I spent two years writing a book on confidence in radiology. In my research, I found that the biggest enemy to your confidence isn't the surgeon, it's what happens inside your own head. And it reminds me of a story about crabs. If one crab is alone in a bucket, it can climb up with, with ease. But if there are 20 crabs together, none can escape. Each crab that tries to climb out is being pulled back by the other crabs. Your negative thoughts act exactly like those crabs. You can maybe address one or two negative thoughts, okay, but 20? You're stuck. In this video, I'll show you how to kill those 19 other mental crabs and how to become the confident radiologist you always wanted to be. But first, we need to understand the most dangerous bias in medicine. When your competence is low, you can feel very confident because you don't know what you don't know. Psychologists call this the Dunning-Kruger effect. This is a big problem in radiology. You probably know someone like this, like the experienced, super self-confident resident and puts those super confident reports out which miss the primary diagnosis or are simply wrong, just because he doesn't know any better. Or an experienced radiologist in private practice who works in complete isolation. He creates reports that read super well but mistakes sarcomas for lipomas and because he doesn't receive any feedback, he thinks he is the greatest. But if you are watching this video, you are certainly not like them. You are more careful as a radiologist. While overconfidence is dangerous for patients, underconfidence is dangerous for you. And this leads to second guessing, slow reporting and eventually burnout. You are aware of the pitfalls and you know how much you don't know. You might feel stuck in a confidence trap, in a bucket full of mental craps. To escape the trap, we need to look at how confidence actually works. Confidence doesn't just build in a straight line, it moves in cycles. You get some positive feedback, solve a few tricky cases and your confidence goes up. Then you fail, you miss something, or you get negative feedback and your confidence goes down. Then you fight the crabs, you get out of the dip and build up confidence again, even higher than before, just to get pushed down again by some random event. Up and down but with an increasing average over time. And there is also something called super cycles like exams, life events, like new jobs that influence this pattern overall, which I describe in my book, The Confident Radiologist, and you can find the link to the book down below. However, the real problem is when you get stuck in a confidence dip and you are unable to get out. This is when you let one mistake bring 20 thoughts or crabs in your pocket, like I'm not good enough, or I'm going to get sued, Everybody thinks I'm a bad radiologist. This negative spiral is the confidence trap. So the question is, how do you kill those crabs and keep building up the confidence again? Here are my three golden rules to silence the crabs and build real expertise and confidence as a radiologist. Rule number one is the most important one. So most radiologists try to solve low confidence with more knowledge, reading more articles, textbooks, and late night spirals on Radiopedia. But unsupervised learning lacks the number one key ingredient to confidence, feedback. Confidence comes from feedback on your own cases from someone more experienced than you. Right now, this is how you probably receive feedback. You wait until you are confused, then you ask the first person who isn't busy in the reading room, or you receive random angry calls or emails from clinicians. This is random. What you need is a system. Create a peer review system in your workplace. Find a mentor. Ask if they can spend maybe half an hour with you every week to discuss your difficult cases. It can be hard to find a mentor in a busy workplace though, I know, and that's why I have created the Virtual MSK Fellowship, where I systematically offer personalized feedback to radiologists worldwide. Take for example Samir, a consultant who joined me a few years ago. So I was already a 10-year MSK radiology consultant before joining Chris's fellowship. The major difference is in complex cases like hip arthrogram, shoulder arthrogram, wrist arthrogram. I would spend around 20 to 30 minutes. Now I spend around 10 minutes. Now, speed is important, but also it's without losing the quality on the report. And actually improved quality with better speed is what the fellowship has given me. Samir didn't lack any knowledge. He lacked calibration. Weekly feedback helped him to triple his speed. So rule number one, get feedback. Ask yourself, 
Where can I get feedback on my cases this week? Rule number two. When you miss a diagnosis, it is easy to feed the crabs with excuses. You, you can blame your training, poor image quality or the request form. And maybe that's fair, but blaming others leaves you powerless. Whatever your current position is, it was a series of decisions that you took that led you there. And the future decisions you take can get you out. If you want to become an expert, you have to take things into your own hands. Make everything or every case an opportunity to improve. Here is a practical tip you can start using tomorrow. Next time you see a post-operative scan, go check if there is a pre-operative scan available. See if you could have spotted the finding correctly. Post-op imaging is a gold mine. It is a surgically confirmed truth, so use it. Rule number two, don't blame others, it's all you. The moment you accept this, you silence the victim mentality and you can take back control over your life. Rule number three, when you lack confidence, it's so tempting to just avoid the pain. You cherry pick cases, you trade the difficult ankle MRI for too easy knee MRI. Avoidance just feeds the crabs. I've spoken to radiologists who de-skilled themselves this way. They avoided complex MRI for so long that they couldn't do it anymore. Don't let that happen, okay? Mistakes are inevitable. When they happen, identify the root cause. Was it a knowledge gap? Were you rushing? Did you use a systematic approach or not? Then notice any thoughts like, oh, I'm terrible at ankles. Those are noisy crap thoughts. Bet them away and move on. So rule number three, don't settle. Don't shrink your skills to fit your comfort zone. Push yourself to be the radiologist you always wanted to become. Now you understand how to quiet the 19 crabs in your own head and escape the confidence trap. But what if the crabs aren't in your head? What if the actual problem is a surgeon who just doesn't trust the radiologist no matter what you do? Then click here to learn the three main reasons why clinicians ignore your reports and exactly how to fix them.